This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Coffee, coffee, coffee fitness unicorn. Coffee, coffee, coffee fitness unicorn. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Coffee Fitness Unicorn, your pocket DJ, and you're listening to Coffee Chats Podcast, a show where storytelling and coffee hang out. This week's special guest is horror author Marcus Hawk. We talk about yarn penises, humor and horror, and zombie Christmas carols. Listener warning, this episode is a little more graphic at times. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify, or both, to hear more unique stories like these. Go forth and be magical. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Coffee Fitness Unicorn, your pocket DJ, and you're listening to Coffee Chats Podcast, a show where storytelling and coffee hang out. Today's special guest is Marcus Hawk. Welcome to the show, Marcus. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty great. How are you, Pocket DJ? <laughs> very nice. Very I love nice. That, that, that designation. That's, every time I see that, I just think any moment in my pocket the, from the phone, it'll start going. It's, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And little lights start flashing. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. So, Marcus. I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> great I'm, I'm loving it i clearly, swear there's nothing but coffee in here i'm like clearly you and i should like either have more coffee or tone it down i'm not sure I, what what, <laughs> num- what number are you on well we're at the beginning so let's dial it up a little bit yeah for right now it's all good just riding this wave that's let's write it let's write yeah. it so marcus yes let the listeners know who you are and what you are all about you know, I mean, don't we all ask those questions about ourselves all the time? I mean, it's so existential. Who am I? What am I doing here? Right. <laughs> what are any of us doing here? Uh, I am an author, uh, primarily of uh, horror and dark fiction. I've dabbled in some other uh, things, but those that's my that's where I'm most comfortable, I guess, or uncomfortable, depending on how you look at it. Um, I have written one novel so far and a few shorter stories that have appeared in uh, various magazines and anthologies and I'm uh, continuing to work on oh there it is right there yeah that's the new one too I've got the I've got the old version whoops are yeah. are the page numbers uh, the same for it your version be. okay there's okay. there's there there was one edition and that was just that I put um in the beginning I Trigger warnings, content warnings, what whatever designation you you prefer to uh, refer to them by. That was something that I had never known of before when I first published it. So I just thought, you know, it deals with some some things here and there. So I stuck that in there. So it's only it's it's increased by one. That's it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I have a reader warning as my very first note uh, oh. before I even started reading. I was like, all right, what are we in for? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's yeah. it's. Nothing, nothing so, well, I suppose that really depends, but <laughs> nothing so extreme that you'll be, uh, you know, hugging your knees in the shower or anything like that. But just, I, I always think it's, you know, ever since that was something that I became aware of, I think, you know, it, what's, what's the harm really, you know, it, it, could, it could help uh, someone else if they don't want to particularly or at least you know just even just to prepare you know be like okay I'm just a heads up kind of thing if I if I would give somebody a spoiler warning I'll give somebody a content warning so that's the way I look at it for sure for, yeah. and, and uh, thank you for saying that because I usually try not to do spoilers um, mm. and if we do do spoilers 
I'll make, uh, I'll try to like cut that out so that you and I can t- have a conversation about that. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you brought up a, an excellent thing. So the reader warning, mm-hmm. and like I said, I, I was like, all right, what are we in for? Um, but you also have your dedication and oh, your dedication yeah. is so very sweet um, because you all, you have Pearl in there. Yes. And, and I, I, I don't want to get too, too intense on that, but I do have okay. a question related about Pearl. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming everybody, anybody who's looked at your Instagram page will probably, and who's read your book, bossy in the book is Pearl. Is that essentially, yeah. Pearl, Pearl was uh, my cat who uh, unfortunately passed away before um, the book was published so um, I included her in the dedication. And actually, uh, I guess that's an, another addition to this. Um, <laughs> it's an addition to this edition. <laughs> um, is that also added to the dedication was my grandmother who passed away um, just in December. So I'm so sorry. That's, you know, you know, we all have our time and she had a good long life and everything. So everybody, everybody there is yeah, a friend or family member who... Um, who's no longer with us and probably appears in some way or another in those pages. So very cool. Cause that's actually a question. Um, are any of your characters based on real people? A few of them actually. Yeah. Um, and just to clarify one thing that I think people often wonder about or, or, or tend to, you know, sort of take the ball and run with is like when someone says that something's some, or a character is based on somebody that, that for whatever reason, we seem to think that that means that that's like a transplant of like the real person to, you know, uh, to the page. Not, not so it's usually, you know, something that you start with as sort of a, a blueprint and sort of, you know, embellish or change more often than not any, any ones that are based on real people are an amalgam of, of different influences. So it's usually, you know, but uh, yeah, to answer your question simply, yes. Okay. <laughs> There's a few and- of them that are. It could be a two part or not, depending on what your answer was. So I have a second part of that, which is, did you create them from scratch? So, <laughs> so many of them I did. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty even, or, you know, it's, there, there's a split for sure. Maybe 60, 40, I'm not really quite sure, but um, there's, there's a number that are based on nobody. Like I, I've even thought about that. Cause I was like, well, this one is based on, you know, somebody, but that one really isn't. So where'd that come from? And it's just, I, yeah, I, I'm not really sure where, where that comes from. It comes from that imagination above, below the side, who knows creativity uh, speaking of which. So I actually I have okay. yeah. many, your cat overlord yes. uh, short <laughs> for Minerva. Yes. So, um, which is awesome because we have a black cat too. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. So I was looking at pictures of your kitty cat and I was like, oh my God. I was like, it's, I, I just, I, I lose my mind for black cats. I just think they're like free. Me too. Cool. They're so, you know, they, they really get like, it's sad that that's so, um, so prominently the, the breed of cat that gets left at shelters mm-hmm. and things like that because of a, a, like a false stigma yep. about them being bad luck. Like that's honestly what, what's behind it. And yep, they get a bad they're rap. just, yeah. Yeah, this one's kind of kind of crazy. <laughs> so, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. She's not bad luck, but yeah, she's yeah. <laughs> yeah. she likes to likes to run from one end of the place to the other at two and three in the morning. But that's all right because I'm usually up anyway. So right, yeah, writing maybe yeah. yes no right yeah writing just yeah I'm I I'm a night owl like I don't I don't uh, I don't do daytime very well like uh, if you can see my uh, windows I, i'm like danny elfman i try to avoid direct sunlight at you know most times so i love that you said that because my mom and so <laughs> vampires you love vampires i love vampires my yeah. mom would come and visit me um when when she was still alive um oh, and no, sorry. um so so when you were talking i was like i can relate and so she would uh i feel you man thank you yeah. um she would come and visit and my mom would literally open up every single window and (laughs) And I would come down the stairs and I'm like (sighs) oh that's why I I wear these too it's like just it's so bright it's so bright I know and she's like 
I don't like the cave because she had a, an Argentinian accent. I don't like the cave. It needs a light. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, the fact that you said that, I'm like, I could have it black as hell in here and be very Me happy. too. I do. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I do in, in all senses, I do better in dulcet tones and, you know, twilight. Uh, Absolutely. Shading and uh, lighting and everything. It's, it's. Yeah. Dark is good. It, I agree. I agree. Dark is good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay. Except when it comes to coffee, I gotta have my okay. milk and so, milk and sugar. Uh, same here. So th- that being said, one of my favorite questions is, how much coffee in a day do you drink, and what is your go-to coffee? Have you noticed how Coffee Fueled Stories doesn't have any ads? That's because I work tirelessly to keep this show alive. After three years on my own, I've decided I need to ask for your help. I've never asked anyone to subscribe. I've never asked anyone to leave a review. I've never asked anyone to rate the show. And I've never asked anyone to pay to listen. There are a few ways you can help support the show. I've created a Patreon page, Coffee Field Stories, and a subscription section on my podcast website. It's simple to support and help me keep my dream alive. Just click the link in the show notes to set up your paid subscription option. It's that easy. Thank you for your support. If on average, maybe two cups on the weekends, maybe three, I think like the most I've ever gone for is five. And I think that must have been something that I was doing that day that (laughs) required it. Um, but usually I don't, I don't go too complicated with it. Um, it's usually just honestly instant. Like I I know that's, uh, that's, that's the Jackson Triggs of, uh, of coffee, but I, I, I could drink mud. Honestly, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fuss me, but I like, I like a nicer one too. Sometimes like I like an Americano or a cappuccino. Awesome. And there's no coffee shaming here. I have like three jars of instant. I have a whole deep, I actually have a decaf instant. And then, and that's for, I, I know that's because I like to drink coffee at night, but I do also like need to go to sleep. Yeah. I wake up and I told you this, I'm waking, I'm trying something new. So I woke up at 5am this morning, um, felt very productive. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it again tomorrow. So I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow and I've got a blog that I need to work on. Let's see if you can read it. It might be backwards. No, it's not. Murder blog. Murder blog. I like that. (laughs) Right. So uh, uh, I'm going to be doing a a murder blog tomorrow and I'm going to try it at 5 a.m. and see if I can I can do that. You can do it. But uh, so if if, if 5 a.m. doesn't make you want to murder something. (laughs) And I'm an early will. bird. I'm an early bird. And I'm also a, a night owl, like swing shift. Oh, boy. That's... <laughs> I, I don't require a lot of sleep. Oh, apparently not. <laughs> six hours. Yeah. I can function on six hours. So, right. What about I can you? Function on, I can, I can do five. It's just, it's a matter of when. So, I mean, between, you know, cats waking you up and right. needing to, you know, get up and go about your day, things like that. Yeah. It's uh I, I can do it. I just prefer not to if I don't have to. I get it. If it's about finding your groove and what works for you and that works for you, then for sure. Um, for sure. Go for it. Yeah. Uh speaking I would, of I would be face down on the floor. <laughs> it like I said, my own drool. <laughs> that being said, um I, I love your um in part two and and when you are introducing militia day and am i saying that correctly militia yes. day yeah you did yeah, when perfect. you okay when you are introducing militia day all of the characters so like hirsch yen and and the team so i'm just mm-hmm. going to call them the team yep um two questions but first it it reminded me of aliens when we meet the space marines you're not the first person to say that actually okay. and the funny okay. thing is that that wasn't intentional it must have just <laughs> Like there's a lot of things that probably were influences that just kind of seeped through and I didn't mean for them to be, but that that's probably, yeah, you probably hit the nail right on the head. Like Vasquez is such a badass, you know? <laughs> and, and so I was like, you ever get mistaken for a woman? <laughs> 
fight. Game over, man. Yeah, Game yeah. over. Right. Assholes and elbows. Let's go. <laughs> So when I'm, when you were, I, it, that like just kind of popped into my head. So my question about uh, Militia Day is, do you have a favorite character from oh the Militia Day team or a favorite character from the book? It, it could be in general, but uh, it popped I mean, into my head for question of the team. I like, I mean, I like, I like them all in their own way, but right. some that I guess that stand out are um, like I really, I really do admire Grimm. Grimm's based on somebody who I know, and was just always a very, you know, warm and intelligent presence in my life. Uh, I love Sarah because she, <laughs> she, she is very much uh, an amalgam of three different women that I know, um, and I also really, um, yeah. I've, I've, one, one I really do li like a lot. I, I'm going to, I'm going to try not to say love, but really do uh, like a lot of Novak. It's a very curious thing writing a character like that because clearly he's, a, you know, not a good guy, but there's, you know, as you'll see, there's, there's some more. He had a very poignant point about good guys and bad guys. And oh, you got to he, that already. Yeah. Oh, I read the whole book. Oh my God. You're insane. I, 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 I have to struggle to read only because my own, you know, uh, schedule and things like that. But I, I'm trying to get through books that I started like months ago, <laughs> not because they're bad, but just because I'm a slow reader, but man, way to go. Thank you. Well, I, I wanted, I, I didn't want to half-ass this. So I, I you know, I, there's sure a difference didn't. between being, um, unprepared and half-assed. Um, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't bookmark it, but I thought your point about what he said, because the, the bad guys don't know they're bad guys and the good guys don't think they're bad guys. And that conversation that you had between Novak and Mason was so brilliant. Like Thank I you. was blown away by that. I was like, yeah, oh my God. Yes. I, I totally agree with, with what you said. And of course I feel now I wasn't sure we were even going to talk about that, which is why I didn't bookmark it. I was like, I don't know if we're going to talk I can about tell you that. What it okay. <laughs> Probably after 45. Got it. Yeah. It was, um, it, it was brilliant. Around. It was when he was, I thought when he was um, handcuffed and of course this is, we don't want to say anything about the padded cells, like whatever. Um, but it was that conversation that Novak and he were having. And you, I like that you said that because Novak really does feel like, a, and, and that he's, he, he even uses the word human. Um, and he, it shows that he is not so different than Mason and other humans. It's funny because, well, yeah, so he's, I mean, it's, it's something of a, whatever you want to call it, uh, truism, I guess, in, in, uh, in fiction, but also I, I probably in life, maybe a little less so, but, uh, that villains are, are victims that had, we don't know their story. You know, we don't know what it is wrong. We don't know what, what happened with them. And later on in the, in the book, like it's, it's touched on uh, a bit and without, without saying too much, I'm trying so hard not to say too much, but there's yeah there's 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 more to that there's more behind that that's going on a absolutely that leads somebody to do what we perceive to be bad and also you know he touches on like if prey and predator were reversed who would be looking at you know who in such a way and who's who's a threat to whom and and why and all that stuff because humans humans really are not we're not that <laughs> sorry this will bring the mood down a little bit <laughs> have our uh we, we need our ass is handed to us uh, every once in a while as a as a species you know because we sometimes not not always on the uh on the on the side of good unfortunately no um can you please tell me about yarn penises <laughs> what the hell is that is that a thing it's, it's in my you notes you, yarn you penises question mark you, <laughs> <laughs> you just made I me wish... smart I wish I could tell you that that was something that I had seen and decided to incorporate, but I don't think that it was, but <laughs> I'll bet you anything. If you go on Etsy, you'll find Yarn penises. something. I, I, I'm sure you'll find something somewhere. I, you literally had me oh laugh out loud 
several times in your book <laughs> and that was the first one yarn penises oh, I'm glad. <laughs> um uh and then uh i i thought so what was really cool was you also brought in so in the very beginning you mentioned led zeppelin pink floyd bob marley and then you mentioned two tv shows mash and golden girls you know your favorite led zeppelin song your favorite pink floyd song bob marley song and your favorite characters from mash and golden i feel pretty we'll just confident we'll that. just bring up yarn penises again that's all <laughs> Okay. Nobody has that. I've been asked about the the dildo in the in the jar of mayonnaise, but I've never been asked about the yarn penises yet. Oh, and there was the part about uh, I think I forget who it was, but somebody said something about sticking a penis in peanut butter or something like that. And I was like, my God, how much love, coffee did Marcus have? <laughs> I love that. I love that somebody is responding to this in such a way because honestly, I think sometimes like on, okay, I reread this like a little while ago, and then. I went, boy, I really do double down on some of the just like infantile humor here, right? I, 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 I it may not necessarily land for some, and it, and it hasn't, but you're, you're clearly my demographic. So <laughs> whatever you, whatever, whatever you have to say, make sure it gets out to uh, like-minded uh, individuals. Led last Zeppelin. time. Yes. <laughs> on the last episode of. Yeah. Join us at the same unicorny time. <laughs> for sure. So when you mentioned Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Bob mm-hmm. Marley, like, did you have songs in mind when you put that that scene in um, in the book, or not, were you just kind of vibing? I was just, uh, I think I was just putting that, like, I think it just fit with, you know, I in for anyone who who doesn't know, I guess I basically describe uh, the house that that Mason lives in with his grandmother Rose, who's a bit of a free spirit, um, and. I guess it just seems like those were the type of records that she would have versus, you know, classical or big band or that sort of thing. So no, no specific songs in mind. Okay. It just seems like that's her jam. That being said, you had lots of pop cultural references. So <laughs> that, that, that was kind of like the start of it. Um, oh, real quick. Another I have thing a... that just seeps out into my work. I love it. And so I, I have, um, we, we were, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> no worries. Uh, we were DMing yeah. about uh, Monty Python and Pony Boy, <laughs> Stay Gold Pony Boy. Um, so yeah. I, I actually laughed. So this is what I was saying earlier. You literally had me laughing out loud. And the first time I laughed out loud was, and I did dog ear it. So please don't hate me. I don't. I. Um, what are you I doing do here? Too. Okay, good. Uh, what do you want? What are you doing here? What is your quest? What is your favorite color? That's when I literally lost. I was like, and he's a Monty Python fan. I I love it. I love it. And so from that point, here, readers, humor right? and horror, right? It works. And and that's what I think. Um, I wasn't expecting, especially because you had the reader warning. And so when you threw in these bits of um levity, I um. Like I said, I, I laughed out loud uh, on page 324, chapter 41. It's where he's journaling about Halloween. Mm. And my favorite part of that was where Julie, it says Julie wanted to be the DeLorean. I literally lost it. So that that is honest to God based on a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> One year for, I'll, I'll send you a picture maybe, but I... Um... One year for Halloween, friends of mine and I, I went as Marty because, well, because. Why and, not? <laughs> uh, yeah, because why not? Why not? And um, yeah, uh, my friends, Paul and Mari, went as uh, Doc Brown and the DeLorean. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> in, in, in a, you know, a makeshift kind of way, but uh, I yeah. It. yeah. I love it. Like, I literally, you had me laughing out loud and I was... I was not expecting to be laughing out loud in, in like you said, in, in the horror, um, in a horror book. Um, so you referenced, I've got here, you know, Alfred Hitchcock. Um, oh, there was a, no- oh, this, this is why I did you. Okay. So please do your best lurch for us. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. so. uh, you rain. <laughs> I love <How's> it. <laughs> Oh my God. I was like, not again, uh, not, a, that's not the old, expecting the old, that. 
Adam's family for anyone who hasn't seen the show, the uh, the old black and white show. Oh. He used to speak. <laughs> I love Lurch. Lurch is such a great character. And then you also have um, Edgar Allan Poe in here. Uh, that was his costume. And yes. oh, yeah. you yeah. were Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> so that was, that was actually, that was sort of the snake eating its own tail a little bit. Like that was something <laughs> that I put in the book. And then I decided, you know, that's something I could do for how I didn't really have around, you know, what the last two years, events and going places and especially for Halloween we're, we have kind of you know been lighter things right so I thought well what can I still do that I have around here right so I, I did two things that year I went as a black metal mime and uh, yes that was brilliant that was and, hilarious um, yeah and then poke just because I had the the accessories necessary and facial hair uh, which and you also did a painting of Poe yes oh that yeah, was, it was a, and, a pencil and charcoal yeah yeah and so and it, for the listeners I am wearing my Edgar Allan Poe cool shirt, shirt. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. actually from the Poe Museum oh is um, it yeah I didn't get a chance to go my buddy went and so he sent me uh, a mug and a t-shirt um, nice. because he he knows how much I that's that's why I became a literature major like because of Poe beautiful and so that as so there these are what I call like the so everything we've been talking about has not necessarily been like the quote standard um, literature questions, but I'm going to ask you a couple of standard liter- literature questions now. Okay. So did you always <laughs> <Go ahead>. know <laughs> you wanted to be a writer? Is that something that's just been in you? That's something, you know what? I think I, I knew that I always wanted to tell stories. So like I, as far back as I can remember, I, I, I was into, I mean, books and film and shows and like even games, any, any game that had a, um, a story, well, even ones that don't, but you know, where it molded into writing was probably more in, um, in high school than anything, because two things I always did well in were English and creative writing. And I actually graduated with, a. Uh, 95 percent in uh, creative writing which would have been 98 if I had handed my final assignment in on time oh. but oh well um so it was yeah it's 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 always been some somewhere in in that um neighborhood I I once wanted to be a filmmaker that didn't quite work out and I think I just um you know around where where it really I think took took on a life of its own was um I'm actually a recovering alcoholic. So once that was done, once that was, once I was sober, I started rediscovering things that brought me joy and occupied my time. So art and writing. And so I pursued both those things and just tried to get, you know, some things published and it took a good long while, but I finally did. And then that snake bit me and (laughs) it just kind of, continued on into into now and i'm just glad that it has that's awesome so you originally so you just came out with this on um you now have your own publishing company correct yeah it's it's pretty much just for me i thought like maybe i'll do some other something with it at some point like maybe an anthology or something like that so we'll see very cool because your hawk house instagram has a very cinematic feel to it is where I'm going with that question. So that's, so that's to to bring it back to what you were saying about how you wanted to, you know, get into film and you can, you can definitely feel that because a lot of your Instagram, the stories related, the posts related to the book have a cinematic feel to them. And especially like when you were, when, and and it was really cool. I I loved how you did that. Um, uh, Are you familiar with the band Skinny Puppy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not, not super, but I know. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. But familiar enough. So when you yes. were uh, doing your countdown uh, on Hawk House with the videos with like the, the teeth and like the bones and the skeletons, I was having a very skinny puppy feel to those videos. It has a very sort of, you know, indust- uh, industrial type of yes. negative uh, seven type feel. <laughs> to yes. It. Yeah. And, and I was deaf. I was like, oh, I was like, this is good stuff. I was like, uh, that's why well, every day, every day you yeah. were, po- I was like, and when are we going to see the release of this? I love the cinematic feel. 
And Excellent. that was something that um, when I was reading, I had cinematic types of those scenes had a very cinematic feel to them. Um, when can I buy a Militia Day t-shirt and Militia Day <laughs> ring? When, when do you want to buy it? Um, <laughs> I have, you know what, it's, I, I have, so there's actually, I do have a, a, a shop with some other um, designs in there currently. Yes, that I isn't one that. of them yet. I know but that. I, I play, <laughs> but I, I actually plan to. I, um, as soon as I can um, uh, swing it, which actually, I pro- I, yeah, it's, it's just a matter of um, priorities right now because I'm uh, working on a on a collection and then um, the next book and just a few other uh, things here and there. But I would like to have uh, Kirk Shannon, the artist who worked on the um, the skull and the internal artwork do a uh, militia day um, shield crest that's so cool and so have that added to merch hells yeah so in um act one heaven and earth the image that's there it's the rosary with the swords and the shield Mm -hmm. that is uh that was uh i'm gonna turn to that right now as well um so and then one of the things i also have is yes that that sh- that rosary and so the the shield with the swords and the cross and all of that and then of course when you start introducing militia day and all of that and i was like oh i was like is that their symbol is that their and he was you, you talked about the ring yeah um that uh, that would Graham- be harder to have made but i'm sure there's right. a way to do it yeah yeah but uh, all i kept thinking was how cool would it be to have some militia day badassery like well, wear it or stickers or something like that. And I was like, I'm in. If you, if you want it, I'll, if you know, like they say, if, if, if you build it, they will come. So yes, we'll, yes. I'll see what I can do. I, I'm in um, yarn penises though. I will not buy yarn penises. I'm sorry <laughs> to say that. Um, I, I don't know many who would, but again, I'm sure you know, me out, yarn there's, penises. A, there's a kink out there for everyone. So I'm sure somebody. For would. sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 these are going to be a couple of, um, so actually question the coffee stained napkin scribblings. <laughs> are those the drawings that so, are in the book? Yeah, I, I, the, um, so basically the, the way the cover looks and, um, the internal, uh, artwork that, yeah, uh, went in there. I, I sketched a lot of those myself. But, you know, it, it, there's an old saying, right? The, the dentist who drills his own teeth as a fool for a patient. So I decided that I don't, I didn't want to actually see that through <laughs> to, you know, to, to the final product to have that put in. I decided to put that in the hands of professionals who know, you know, what, who, <laughs> who know what they're doing and can do it in good time while I'm working on other things. So that was basically what, what was behind that. So I, I, very, you know, loosely sketched the um, the drawings for the cover and the uh, the internal artwork, and gave them to uh, better minds, namely I, Kirk Shannon and Kellen Patrick Burke. So, which is awesome, and I, yeah. I agree with you completely. There are things that I just leave to the experts. Yeah, like I, I'm all down for learning something new, trying something new, but when it comes to having something that is you know, better left to someone else who is the expertise. Yeah. I I go to them. I I totally hear you on that. I agree. I think I, I I could, if I wanted to spend a lot of time, (laughs) I could, I could have done it, but I thought to get things done in, in good order, this, this is the way, you know, totally. And the ring that you're wearing, I know it's not a militia day ring, but I, I did see it in that. That is so cool. I saw it in, in one of your Instagram photos. And then you had also mentioned about Grimm's ring. And I was like, I wonder if that's like where he got the idea for it. No, that was just, uh, I mean, to have a ring, I guess it, it's like, it probably stemmed from something like, um, you know, like the Pope has a ring, like a papal ring and something. So I figured that was just their, their identifier. It's also um, in the, you know, if you got, if you get to the, and I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but you you tell me. But it's uh, it's a uh, it's a tool as well. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's it's both a, a status symbol and 
um, you know, uh, <laughs> it's it's all purpose, I guess. For sure, for yeah. sure. And <clears throat> it's it's funny. So there's I have a couple of funny stories. So okay. every time you <laughs> mentioned Pope, the word Pope in there, my brain always goes to Poe. Oh, okay. Edgar Allan Poe. I don't know why. So I'm like reading and I'm like, po- wait, what? And, oh, Pope, the, the Pope, pope. Yeah. not Poe. But I was like, well, Poe, he, he is, you know. <laughs> so I'm it's like, just... what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I'm like, Poe. It's also probably pope. because it's capitalized too. So that probably. And that it, Probably. It. Yeah. yeah. And so, and like, that's my brain just goes, <clears throat> Poe. <laughs> And so that's funny story number one. Edgar Allan Pope. Edgar Allan Pope, exactly. <coughs> no worries. Um, and then, so I had I knew I had a very short window with which to read your book, and so I just started you, cranking on it. You did incredibly. I just like I said. I, well, that's another reason why I woke up at five a.m. because I wanted to make sure that I was I, I read the book. Oh and gosh. so when I started reading. <laughs> I have my alarm set for five, five thirty, six, and six thirty. <laughs> I started reading your book at five. So by the time I sat down and start and started going, because I had to make coffee, get the cat all settled and everything. So yep. by the time I started reading, it was five thirty. So the five and five thirty alarms were off. So I'm reading and literally I have in here. So opening scene with Father Abbott. Wow, double exclamation mark. Again, no spoilers, but just wow. And so I'm reading these are the reading that scene when my alarm goes off and scares the shit out of me (laughs) my 6 a.m alarm goes off mission mission accomplished and so the whole as is and i was like oh oh okay i'm gonna turn off my alarms now and i was like way to wake me up literally with your book (laughs) it would have been so so well timed if you got to the last part of that chapter and then an alarm went off Man, I, I, I like I said, I'm having several scenes where I'm laughing out loud from your book, and then I knew I was in for a journey when my alarm went off and scared the crap out of me. When I <laughs> just literally just started your book, I was like, oh my gosh! I was like, I am in for a true treat here. A portent of joyful doom, for sure. Yeah, and and then I love that you have, um, you mentioned. <clears throat> father coffee and mm-hmm. of course i know his <laughs> name is not spelled like the drink close enough but you have him in there and i was like so again my brain goes coffee father coffee yeah. father yeah. liquid i like yeah. it can i just say my favorite the, uh, the one that literally had me laughing out loud the most was i have it i'm gonna i have to show you it because it, it cracked me the frick up <laughs> yep <laughs> See? Yep. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, I. Yeah, he's he's, he's a funny. Best, he's, you know something? Scene. He's a funny guy, Novak, isn't he? No, he he's not. is. He's, when well, he booped him on the nose. Boop. I literally, I, I was like, I cannot wait to talk to this guy. I, I cannot wait to talk to this guy. <laughs> I like, I like a bad guy who can make you laugh at the same time, but not because it's like, oh, I like this guy. It's because this guy's fucked. Like, you know, this, you know what I mean? Totally. So he, there was a number of things that, that influenced that. Like the Joker was one of them. Oh Beetlejuice, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger makes me laugh. I don't know. He's funny. He's time. very yeah. funny. He He doesn't take himself seriously, you know, all the time. Yeah. (laughs) Nope. Yeah. And so that is like, seriously, one of my favorite, favorite things that Uh, when he does, because I boop my cat all the time. So (laughs) I, I I love doing a little boop on him. So of course I was like, great. I'm, I'm like Novak. (laughs) I'm booping (laughs) the kitty. Okay. Shoo. (laughs) Shoo. I'm not, I'm not booping the kitty. (laughs) Awesome. Um, okay. I wanted to take you into, it's beginning to look a lot like zombies, my book of zombie Christmas carols with an introduction oh, wow. by Christopher Moore. So because you on your Instagram love Halloween and yep. 
Christmas, but your Christmas is not your traditional Christmas. No. And I as say I scary Christmas, not Merry Christmas. So exactly. I was like, this book seems like it was made for you. So I'm going to take you to the very first song. I'm not really going to sing it um, because you don't want me to sing it, but it's, (laughs) I saw (laughs) maybe, okay. I can, you can, I'll have you sing. I'll tell you what it says. I saw mommy chewing Santa Claus. I saw mommy chewing Santa Claus. See, that's my singing voice. There you go. Underneath the Christmas tree last night, I snuck up without a peep behind mommy, the zombie creep. Now she's biting off Santa's cheek. When I saw mommy chewing Santa Claus underneath his beard now turning red. Oh, uh, oh, what a laugh we would have said if daddy weren't already dead. (laughs) Mommy chewed on Santa Claus last night. I love it. (laughs) I knew you. I was like, this is right up his alley. Where where did, where can I get that? Uh, I, I can't remember if I got this at borders or barnes and borders when it still existed um or barnes and noble but if you want i can i can send you uh the um it's it's freaking brilliant it's it's very thin it's very short and oh look there's a we got a little brain in there oh yeah for the the listeners Uh, this book is truly sick twisted and demented and i love it and so this little boy this little zombie is opening his christmas present and it's a zombie dog and it's eating his face (laughs) it's truly (laughs) These guys are having a lot of fun. So here's a Christmas yeah. tree and they're putting a skull on top of it. That looks like uh, my Christmas tree. Right? I think yeah. I was like, I think he's going to really like this book. And I completely forgot about this book until I was, again, doing my homework on you. And I was playing on your Instagram page. And I was like, I think he's really going to like this. You were right. So this is this is a book I'll designed just for, for you. Yes. Yeah. It's beginning to look a lot like zombies. I can't... Uh, <laughs> and. and it's just it's freaking brilliant the, the the drawings are just awesome so there's a snowman yeah, any I'll, book with illustrations i love and that's those those are great ones i'll, I'll send you, i'll see if i can find a link for this if not i'll, sure. I'll send you uh just uh, i'll photo i'll take a photo of it that way you can at least have the uh, the name and the author but yeah i i was like this is definitely right up his alley you were right um i have a couple of questions for you regarding your go-to writing music oh wow okay and then this is actually uh, kind of a personal question. I noticed when I was doing my homework, you had a post about Croatia. So I wasn't yes. sure if you wanted to talk yep. a little bit about Croatia and your writing music. I Okay. So um, as far as writing music, honestly, it really depends on what's going on in the story for a lot. Of, honestly, a lot of the time, I don't listen to music while I write. Oh, wow. Sometimes I'll listen to ambience or like if there's like if it's set in a city or a woods or something like that, then I'll have maybe that in the background just to sort of, you know, have something to um, unfocus on, if that makes any sense. Yes. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I don't I don't listen to a whole lot of music while I write. There was one there one time in particular where um, you, I'm sure you'll know which one but there was a scene in the book in which i uh, listened to uh, peter gabriel's sledgehammer yes so that was i did catch that reference the, on there maybe the only time <laughs> yes that i can think of so yeah and it's funny because when i saw the word sledgehammer i was like oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> and then i was like oh no he did it <laughs> without any spoilers we're just gonna leave it at that <laughs> Yep. But, That's um, it. right. Um, and then, uh, so, uh, you would reference to, again, this goes back to the, the pop culture, you, you, uh, kind of wove pop culture in there. And so you had mentioned mash and golden girls. And I thought, oh, those are really good shows on the golden girls. Yes. I mean, can you, can you, <laughs> it's, how There's no pick? wrong answer. No, there is no wrong answer. So <laughs> it's who uh, you're drawn to. And I might, I was going to say, I'll tell you my answer. Yeah. I love them all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Sophia is awesome. I would probably have to say Sophia. Rose is hilarious. Picture. Um, <laughs> Sicily, 1925. That's yeah. No, she I mean, probably, probably her, but you're right. There is no wrong. <laughs> there's no wrong. And they all, their characters are freaking hilarious yeah i love them all i love them all 
So there's no wrong answer. Every 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 Monday morning, I am Dorothy's Bornack. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it is. You get that this face, you know? Oh my god, you nailed it! <laughs> but then you know, sometimes you gap and you're a rose, and then aren't we always a little bit blanche? I mean, right? I mean, yeah. every exactly. I feel like so. Blanche is a Friday night, right there. You know, like that's <laughs> that's what, right. That's that's a good time. <laughs> totally. Oh my god! And so now, I say, I'm like, hi, I'm Marcus, and I use humor when I'm uncomfortable. Oh my gosh! And <clears throat> I love. So I actually did read your blog. So again, I I did my homework. I played on your page, so that's why when you saw me blowing oh, up your Instagram, you. that was me doing my <clears throat> homework. I was getting to know my guest, and um. Then I went to your blog. So, you know, again, reading your book, because I want to be able to have a, a, a conversation with you, not an interview. This is the, the, the podcast is not an interview. Again, I just use these questions for us to get to know you. Yeah. And, and, and it is about your book. So we're going to use that as I called it, a but uh, as, as a gateway segue, anyway, some kind um, of way. Right. And it's, it's a way for us to like tap in to try to get to know you. Like I said, I was reading your book and I was laughing out loud. It's horror. And like you said, it, but you, it's funny. And that's why, and I was, I was very unexpected. And that's why I was like, I cannot wait to talk to this guy. Like (laughs) this guy, like, this is going to be fun. Like we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get deep, but we're also going to laugh. And, yeah. and so I hope that, you know, this wasn't Those are the too pa- two markers of a good conversation right there. Right. I, I was like, yeah. I was hoping this, this wasn't going to be like too painful and that we, it wasn't going to be. And then when your reaction to the boop, I was like, yes, <laughs> that, and, and like I said, and the fact that you put that in there, right. I, I mm. lost it. Biggest laugh out of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. No, I look, I mean, that's that's those are things that I think you know I think a lot of the time writing things you're never really sure how it's going to land and it doesn't always do the same with with everybody right so but when when somebody responds to it in the way that you have it's like it's 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 beyond words so thank you awesome so actually you know what we were talking about militia day shirts yes you gotta have a boop shirt (laughs) Hashtag boop. Yeah. Boop. Novak <laughs> boop. Hashtag Novak boop. Oh my I'll, gosh. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll, I'll see what I can do with that. There's got to oh. be something. Yeah. yeah. But uh, all right. On that final note, uh, would you like to tell us about Croatia or uh, should, oh, wow. we, so, should we have a conversation about that at another time when we've got no, another we three do, hours? No, no, absolutely. <laughs> hey, we have another three hours. That's fine. Um, Croatia. So I. Um, I'm part Croatian. My, my uh, dad and my um, grandparents are from there originally. They came here when he was uh, five or six, I think. And I, um, for the first time and currently only time, got to visit there uh, in 2010. And I was just blown away at, like I'd, I'd, I'd heard about it, I'd seen pictures and, you know, I knew, you know, whatever, whatever you, you get to know um, over, over the years, but I didn't, I wasn't prepared for just how, how beautiful it was, how, how much culture there was, how much history there was. Like there's churches that are 900 years old. Oh my gosh. Now, we don't have anything that's 900 years old here, at least no. nothing that, uh, you know, is, is worth seeing. So um, how, how was the coffee and the food? unbelievable oh man like it was <laughs> so one thing I did try uh, like an authentic espresso <laughs> I think for the first time and I don't like so I used to have espresso lattes which I which I didn't know was a latte but it was yeah essentially latte made with espresso coffee which is how I just thought it came so when I ordered an espresso and they brought me a cup this big <laughs> with a tiny little layer of uh-huh. black Crema. cream in it uh-huh. and I was like okay so I try to sip of that I coughed for five minutes straight because it was strong <laughs> it was like it was like it was like drinking pens oil you know it was just 
unreal. So, so, but I mean, good, but it was, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you're trying to break uh, uh, jet lag, that's the way to do it. So, <clears throat> but the food, like the food was just incredible. It was, I, I mean, I tried things there that I don't think I ever really like just trout that was fresh and, mm. you know, um, uh, there's so many like desserts and pastries and just, it was, it was incredible. And it looks like, like, so in, in the, in the, in the main, in the capital Zagreb, that it looks, you know, uh, very like a, like a European city. But then when you go to the coast, to the, to the Adriatic sea, it looks like postcards from Italy and Greece. And it looks just like, because it's on the same exact stretch yep. of, of the, of the, of the ocean. And I was just, I'd love to go back there. I, I, I'd love it so much. Did you make it to Dubrovnik? No, unfortunately, no. We only had time. We was only there for two weeks, so we didn't get to go anywhere other than uh, Zagreb and Kirk. It's called KRK. But um, yeah, it was it was really something. I'd love to go to Dubrovnik, and there's another uh, town called Split, and yeah, just so many so many places and it's such a small uh place too you can drive it across the country in an hour you know oh wow That's Canada, so that cool. would just get you to the next town <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. right uh, yeah same here it's yeah. it, you can drive for 10 hours and still be in the same state oh yeah like... you drive seven hours here you're you're one province over you drive seven hours there you're in another country <laughs> oh yeah for sure you're like oh we just passed through five countries like, oh look there's amsterdam you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah totally <laughs> Oh, well, that's freaking awesome. Uh, so Marcus, now that we have officially hit all of my notes on my paper and we've had our three hour conversation. Is that all it's been? <laughs> oh my God. It's been awesome. It's been totally awesome. Um, and I've enjoyed it. So thank you so much for, for making me laugh and uh, sharing these awesome Please, stories. Thank you. I'm, I'm beyond, I'm beyond appreciative here. It's, it's, and like I said, whenever you've got those t shirts, count me in. So oh, uh, you, you'll be the first one. I was you're like, the you first get, one who's asked. So you're the first one who will be getting one. You've got a Militia Day fan here. So um, right. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like all the characters. And like I said, I felt like it was very much like aliens and the Space Marines. And I love them all for different reasons. Um, but uh, so are, are there uh, any uh, projects that you have going right now that we should be aware of? Yeah, I have uh, I have a collection of um, sh of uh, short horror stories coming out in the fall, both published and unpublished, um, called Acts of Violence. So that'll be I'm I'm <laughs> I'm actually technically still working on the last two, the last two that just need you know a little bit of uh, polishing up, and then I'll be looking for an editor to get those out and into the into the world for uh, early September, hopefully. Um, <laughs> he said, having set the date. Um, but, <clears throat> and then uh, I'm also working on the next book in the Miracle Sin uh, series. Very cool. So that will be coming out hopefully, hopefully next year sometime. I'm, you know, it's a bit of an undertaking. So, you know, it, it could wind up being early 2024, but as soon as, as soon as possible, like once I get this collection done, that's my, that'll be my next focus. So that's, that's, that's what I got on the horizon for sure. And, cool. and there's a, yes. uh, 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 an anthology coming out that I have a story in uh, from Dark Pine Publishing called uh, Devil's Rejects. It's uh, an anthology based on previously rejected stories. Oh, that sounds Which excellent. I thought was just a great idea. I put one yes. in as just, uh, you know, as a, you know, who knows, and it got accepted along with a bunch of other great writers and, and their work. So very cool. Yeah. And so where can <clears throat> they find you? Uh, what is your website? Uh, it's, a, it's real hard to remember. It's www.marcustalk.com. Hawk <laughs> with an E. With an E. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And yeah, so that that's the main uh, website and everything kind of, feel, you know, uh, sources from there. But um, on Instagram, same thing at Marcus Hawk, um, Hawk House, Hawk which House. is the, uh, the, the imprint. And if you want some buffoonery, I'm on TikTok under Hawk Talk. Oh, I'm totally <laughs> um, going to have to look you up on uh, TikTok. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Um, and I feel really bad because I just saw my, um, we were having oh, yeah. a conversation. We didn't talk about the restaurant. You were going to a. Let's talk about that. Okay. Ready? So uh, this for the listeners, yep. but because I literally just had a total like uh, rando yeah. forgotten thought. Um, I sent Marcus a video of a bookmark in his book and it's at the Overlook Hotel. And it's Jack Nicholson sitting at the bar and he's holding up a postcard. So this is so cool. So we're both holding up Overlook Hotel postcards. And when I sent that to him, he was saying that he was Marcus. You were on your way to a. Yeah, last night I went to a, um, a local restaurant themed after The Shining. So it was, um, I'll do a post uh, in the coming week and it's, it's called The Wednesday Room. And it looks like the bar has uh, behind it. It's um, it says all work and no play. <laughs> the carpet has uh, uh, the Overlook Hotel uh, carpet pattern, and it oh looks very God. much like the like the Golden Room from or the Gold Room from um, from the Overlook. So <sighs> it was it was really great, actually. It was it was you know a um, little a little pricey, a little trendy, and that's that's all well and good. So you know no no harm there. Were the was the food like labeled? Um, you know, like some of it was, yeah. The, the red rum, especially. Mrs. Torrance, or something. The the, the, the cocktails were um, like there was a, a come and play with us, and oh um, that was was what one of the drinks was called. Um, oh my gosh, that's insane! Trying to remember that's the crazy. But there was a bunch, yeah. It was a, a bunch of things like that. So that I is so there. cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I'm I. As soon as I found I, out that was in town, I was like, I have to go to that because that's my favorite horror movie. The Shining. I mean, yeah. that's just it's it's a classic. <laughs> it's totally and you're you know, you can definitely tell. I love that you did pictures of your bookshelves. Um, after you had like organ reorganized mm -hmm. your bookshelves, and um, you had like the King section, and then you had the Anne yeah. Rice section, <clears throat> and I should have known. I'm not gonna. So I'm. Um, every time you knock it reminds oh, me of no no it <laughs> reminds me of you did a shave and a haircut two bits <laughs> yes again you had me laughing out loud <laughs> he it, you literally explained he knocked <clears throat> shave and, uh, he knocked shave and a haircut and then literally the response was two bits and i was yeah. like again this guy is crack i am dying of laughter with this book and it's graphic and gruesome and gory. And then there's like, you know, like a really, yeah. uh, that was, I was not expecting the sex scene though. I'm going <laughs> to let you know, I was yep. not expecting the sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> that was, <laughs> you threw me for a loop on that one. I'm not going to lie. I, I, <laughs> I was like, what? I, think I threw myself for a loop because I put some things in that, that I'm not usually into. I just, it's, like, I got questions about that too. They were like, is this, is this your usual bag? I'm like, no, it's not. It's just what I, what, what my, what my brain did. So I put it in there. I was like, Whew. they say, if you haven't written something that you would be embarrassed to show your mother, it's not worth, not, not worth showing to other people. Really? So, <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's just a saying, but you know, like, uh, it, especially I get it. I get is, it. Not, not, not a whole lot of, you know, family members come to me going like, I read this. Was, yeah, yeah. That's you wrote a book. I'm just like, yes, I did. <laughs> you don't have to read it, and it's probably a good thing if you don't, because there's things in there I don't think I want you knowing about. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. Like I said, I, I was like, okay. Well, and moving on. All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like, oh, 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 oh. I see. Okay. Yeah. And then I was yeah. like, all right. Uh huh. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, and we're back. That's pretty much how it goes, too. Yeah. That was so, yeah. so that was uh that was uh that was definitely like I said, you had so much in here that just um, you know, like like that scene, the yarn penises, the boop, all of this stuff that just you know cracked me up. And and that was a, a refresh that was the the word I've been looking for for hours. Refreshing surprise. Because you know, we love horror and we read a lot of horror and, um, you know, when you can find something, uh, refreshing and new, and especially, you know, this is your first, um, full novel. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I, I was just like, 
wow. And then the way that you left the ending, and again, we won't have any spoilers. Um, I was like, okay. I was like, bring, bring, bring it on, yep. bring it on. So oh, that being... be <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <It> will be. <laughs> anyway, I digress. You and I can go on pop uh, references. I, I've got a, that's what I'm saying. I was like, once once I realized when when we started chatting uh on dms and when we figured out like this is going to be it's not number one it's not an interview it's yeah. going to be a chat and the two of us are just going to start bouncing off of each other and sharing silly crazy things and then all of the like i said once i when i got to the pop reference cultures or pop culture references in your book i was like oh it's on it's yeah. totally on well, let's, <laughs> and, and and that's the thing i think is you know just trying to do something that is that puts your own stamp on it and hopefully it it resonates with somebody and it doesn't with everybody that's okay but you know for the people that it does it uh, it speaks to them and and I I feel very much the same when I see that in shows like Community Community is one of my favorite shows and every time there's some some reference or some little you know just whatever it is in there I just go this is this is why I love this you know so for sure. I'm just glad it glad it worked that way. I love it. I love it. Well, Marcus, thank you so much for your time. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you for the laughs. My cheeks are starting to I, I need to <laughs> mine too. They're, they're, they hurt so much, but in the best possible way. So <laughs> thank you very much. Uh if you could please do my tagline, send us off and do my tagline, go forth and be magical. However you want to say it, however you want to do it, I will be greatly appreciative. Go forth and be magical. <laughs> <laughs>